What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, people, what's up? It's me, L Teddy 27 Y'all know what I do. I do chronicles. I'm a teacher, and I'm angry. So these are my angry teacher chronicles. Before I get started with this review, this is going to be my review for Love & Hip Hop Atlanta Season 9, Episode 4. Um, I don't remember the name of it. It'll be somewhere up here or up there or somewhere. Um, I just want to make this announcement. This might be my last Love & Hip Hop review. Because while I love doing Love & Hip Hop Atlanta reviews. And I do think that they are my funniest reviews. Like when I went back and I binge watched all my season 8 reviews. Those were some of the most hilarious videos that I think I've had. The numbers just don't support it. So I could just make videos for myself and watch my own videos and not post them on YouTube and waste time. So, um, y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section and I'll gauge by what y'all say in the comment section. But if I don't get a good feedback, I won't make any more reviews of Love & Hip Hop any of the love and hip hops only because it's just not it doesn't you all don't support the love and hip hop reviews like you support other reviews so it's not worth it maybe we'll try again sometime in the future but i just don't know so as of right now i'm kind of this will be my last love and hip hop <clears throat> review um I don't even think I'm going to do a review for the Love & Hip Hop Miami Reunion Part 2. Only because, like I said, you all just don't really support it. So, yeah, I'm probably... If I, if you all don't give me good feedback, I probably won't do that review. And I'll probably be done with the, the whole Love & Hip Hop franchise because it's, it's just not worth it. Uh, but anyway, let me get through this. So... We start off with, um, they gave us this public service announcement letting us know that the confessionals and stuff would be trashy and subpar because now uh, these people are left to themselves to film themselves doing their green screens or confessionals or whatever. I mean, the footage has already been taped, but what happens is they'll go back and like, They'll have, you know, each person go back and film green screens or confessionals or whatnot way later on. And so with everything going on, they couldn't really do that at the studio and things like that. So now they're asking these people to do it at their own homes. And y'all see how, how jacked up some of them look. Some of them tried to fancy themselves up, but the camera quality wasn't good. And like um, Colorism, Keisha, and KK, they look like they tried to glam up for theirs. Whereas Devil Dick and Mimi just didn't give a shit. So, yeah, it was kind of funny to me to see that. But it is what it is. We got to stay safe out here. So, we see Mimi. She's in this. Um, she's been taking self-defense classes. We know since last season after she was... Um, um, somebody tried to rob her and stuff like that. She invited Carly, Spice, and Shekinah. Y'all know we don't call her Shekinah because she's not important enough to get her real name. She'll be Shekinah, at least for this review because we ain't doing no more. So Shekinah, Carly, and Spice um, came with her. Car um, Carly brought her friend Kiyomi. Now this is um, Lil Bow Wow's ex. And... I don't, you, he can't be, he has to be Lil Bow Wow because we saw his meat that ran across um, Al Gore's internet and we see that he's little. So he will always be Lil Bow Wow. He's little down there. So he will always be Lil Bow Wow. Anyway, can somebody, I don't know this Kiyomi chick. Can somebody let me know? Cause I just thought that I'm just assuming, is she a trans woman? Cause I just, Inquiring minds want to know. I'm not saying she looks like a man because she is passable. 
She is not clockable as a trans woman. And I would think that in order for her to be with Lil Bow Wow, she has to be a trans woman. Because Lil Bow Wow likes the peen. Lil Bow Wow don't like cooter. He don't like the cooch. He likes the peen. Remember, um, Omarion was banging his back out, blowing his back out and stuff like that. Beating his box in. So, I'm just, maybe I'm wrong in my assumption. Like, somebody tell me, is Kiyomi trans? woman i mean she's a beautiful trans woman child but she probably got a third leg down there because you know little bow wow likes to get his box uh beat in and his back blown out and i'm assuming that she probably climbs his back honey y'all let me know i don't know her so i'm trying to find out anyway then we see um devil dick Scrap Dillion and Shooter are down at the barbershop and Scrap is thinking about opening up a barbershop and so his sister Cheyenne the, the one who helped him when he was in the halfway house you know and stuff like that she's there and so she's a real he, she's a realtor Arr! she ain't got no job you know a lot of these people who claim to be realtors are just like all of these people who claim to be um stylist. They ain't got no damn job nowhere in America. Anyway, so she was like, "Well, I got to help y'all find because I guess Shooter's supposed to be going in to, in this business venture, venture with him." And she was like, "Oh, I can help y'all find a spot, whatever." Da da da. Child, whatever. Anyway, we find out that the sister is fucking Shooter unbeknownst to devil dick they've been they've been she been a side chick for two years now she been a sideline hoe for two years now and so she's ready to go public but i don't think she realizes that she's a sideline hoe i mean this is shooter we're talking about he's ugly and you know I don't know what it is about these ugly men that end up having like 8,000 women. Like, I mean, I guess if you are a straight man in Atlanta, there's not a lot of you to go around. So you do end up with a lot of uh, women because, you know, ain't a lot of straight men in Atlanta. I'm just saying. Anyway. Then they take us to Akbar V's listening session or whatever. She got beef with colorism, Keisha. Bambi was there, and Spice, and Tokyo, and um, Jock was there. And Bambi chimed in, talking about, well, I don't like her either. Girl, don't nobody give a fuck what you don't like, Bambi. I'm so sick of Bambi. She gets on my nerves. She been got on my nerves. I hate that stank-ass look she always have on her face. Well, her face tooted up at everybody. She always has this stank look on her face. Like, I don't know if she's ever smiled on this show because she always got this stank ass look on her face. And she always has this old prim and proper, pious, holier than thou, you know, attitude about her. Girl, you are Bambi. You were a video skank, okay? You are the chick that was in the fucking hot tub, okay? With Bobby Valentine. Uh, who likes to get banged out by transsexual women? Bambi, girl, you better get your whole fucking life together. Because you over here sitting up here like you are that girl. Girl, if you don't... Anyway. Who child, y'all. I almost had a moment there on her anyway. Child. Akbar. Goes on and on and on and on and on and on about how she's the queen of Atlanta. And this is where we have our hashtag FTFB moment. Our hashtag FTFB moment this week was brought to us by none other than Akbar V. 
Akbarvi, please, bitch, help me understand how you are the queen of anything. What are you the queen of? Getting bust down? Are you the queen of bust down, Tatiana? Because you do got like 85 kids that you're not taking uh, care of that stand with the grandma, the great uncle, the aunt, the nephew, the cousin, Roscoe, their mama, Roscoe, mama's sister, Roscoe, mama's sister, baby, daddy, like everybody keeping your kids. I got a child of yours that's probably in the back room over here that I'm keeping. That you done named after everything I think. One of them was named Derivative, one was named Integrals, one was named Algebra, one was named Subtraction, one was named Addition. I mean, bitch, you got a child for every math concept known to man. Bitch, who did you speak with? Pythagorean? Pythagorean? Um, Pythagorean? Because I'm saying, I'm trying to understand. And you're the queen of Atlanta. Where are your hits? What have you done? Besides, get this little surgery, whatever. That has you looking real bad, by the way. But anyway, girl, please help me understand. But I guess you could be a queen, because guess what? Like I always say, even ants have a queen. So if ants have, can have a queen, then nobody's and bust down Tatiana's can have a queen. And so ghetto ass, nobody ass, bust down Tatiana's can have a fucking queen. And that is you, fucking uh, Akbar V. Urgh, the gutter snipe, right about the hood. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was our hashtag FTFB moment of this week's episode. And maybe our last episode that we'll review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Moving on. Spice even chimed in on it. And Spice got her confessional and say, girl, you talk about you the queen. Colorism, Keisha talk about she the queen. Where the fuck are y'all hits? What have y'all done? I was here for Spice. Spice ran them horse into the ground. Into the ground. Spice say, I'm queen, you queen, she queen, they queen, girl queen. Where's your hits, honey? Where's your hits, Hanny? Hanny! Where's your hits, girl? Girl! Girl! Girl. A mess. A mess! Anyway. Tokyo then. And we saw when Tokyo invited Colorism Keisha and Coco. Um, you know. For our, we'll, you know what? Let's give him a name. For our last episode that we'll probably be reviewing. His nickname will be Footprints on Footprints. Why? Because he puts footprints on ceilings. So Footprints and Colorism Keisha went to this spin class with Tokyo. Now I'm proud of Tokyo. She losing weight the right way, the honest way. I don't know. I, I don't think she had the surgery. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe she did. But I think she did her the honest way, you know. You know, having sex, getting fucked, losing weight that way, you know, because you sweat it out when you get fucked. And she say she getting fucked three, four times a day. She going to spin classes. She out there working out. Mama girl is getting it in. And you can tell her weight is going down the right way. Not like that bullshit we see from the gutter snipe right up out the hood. Ah, bar. V. Cha a mess. Anyway. I ain't had no time for this conversation because I'm I'm already tired of the conversation between Al the gutter snipe and um colorism Keisha. Already sick of it. Sick of it. Say it with me. Not sick of it. I'm sick of it. Okay. Then we at the Devil Dick's party. Now Devil Dick is having a party because he's been out of jail for a whole um year. So, um, him and Kirk brother talk. We got two ex cons talking. We don't want no parts of that. There's nothing that I want to hear that y'all are talking about, unless y'all are ex exchanging stories of how some dude in prison slid his, you know, um, put his sugar. I mean, I'm sorry, put his spoon in your sugar bowl, or you put your spoon in some dude's sugar bowl in prison. Unless you're talking about that, I don't care. Moving on. Then you got KK trying to give advice to somebody, which is unbelievable. Now, that is the most, you know, unrealistic thing in the world. KK giving anybody advice on anything. She over there talking to Mama D trying to give her advice on how to deal with CC. Good, I ain't here for that, KK. Move your ass on. Then we got Carly. Jock comes up to Carly. Carly claims some Jock want her so bad. Oh God, Carly, girl, you want somebody to want you. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, where the fuck is Kendra? Cause if you're supposed to be engaged and y'all supposed to be getting married soon, what the fuck is this whore? Because if you got all these problems with all these women that Jock used to have, and the fact that Jock is a player, 
Why the fuck, Kendra, your ass ain't always on the scene? If I had a man like Jock who got 39 kids and flirt with anything moving, my ass would be attached to him by the hip. Every time that bitch goes somewhere, where's Kendra? She right here. Where the fuck is this bitch at? And how the fuck are you getting married real soon, but you ain't never out with your uh, future husband? Girl, make that shit make sense. But I told y'all, I don't know how much of, of Kendra being a lawyer, I believe, because she don't seem that bright. Paralegal, maybe. We're going to call her paralegal Kendra because I refuse to believe that she has a law degree and she um, has passed the bar anywhere in these yet to be United States of America being as dumb as she is because she's been dumb since, since she's been on the show. That bitch is stupid. Moving on. And then we see Shooter and Cheyenne getting flirty. But this is the same Shooter who said he ain't want this, this to go public yet. Child, we'll see. KK saw them too. And KK mentioned it. So we left the party. Obviously, it wasn't that much of a party. Because, baby, they left that party. You know, if they put your party in the middle of the episode, your party ain't hitting on nothing. Because Mona will put your party at the end. But if your party ain't hitting on nothing, she ain't going to have your party. Meaning, if your party ain't got no fights and no fisticuffs and no drama, Mona ain't putting your party at the end of the episode. She putting it in the middle where she can hide it. Kiyomi is at some photo shoot with Shooter and all this, that, and the third. Child, they dating too. You know, shoot. Oh, God. Like I said, he's an ugly ass motherfucker. But when you're a straight man in Atlanta, you can have you. 19 girlfriends because there ain't too many straight men in Atlanta. So I guess she live in Atlanta. She looking for her a piece of dick that like cooch. So she stick with Shooter. And he's dating her. Now he says that this is an open relationship right now. But he likes her more than he likes Cheyenne. Child, we'll see how Cheyenne takes that. <clears throat> and I mean... Uh, boy, this is Shooter we're talking about, y'all. This is just your run-of-the-mill ain't shit-ass motherfucker. That bitch ain't even that fucking cute. That bitch better be built like a motherfucking horse downstairs. And he don't give me that he is. So I'm looking like, girl, gullible-ass Atlanta women that will sleep with any fucked-up-ass straight man in Atlanta because it's so hard to find straight men in Atlanta. God bless your heart. Anyway. Moving on from that. Bambi decides that she wants to have this family dinner. So Bambi, Scrappy, E-Money, E-Money. Because that's how they say her name. E-Money, Breelan, Mama D, and Cece go out to dinner, honey. I don't know how they expected this to go well. Y'all know Mama D and her antics. Y'all know... Um, crackhead ass Cece ain't wrapped tightly either. How did they think this was gonna go well? But we're talking about Bambi, and that bitch is stupid as fuck too. That bitch ain't the um sharpest knife in the drawer either. That bitch been is you know she ain't too bright either. So her stupid ass probably thought this was gonna work. That somehow this was gonna work out. Mama D came with her same antics, baby. Mama D came out there had a mo whole motherfucker obituary. Printed out for that whore CC, and I ain't mad at you, Mama D. Mama D said that bitch put her hands on me. I ain't never coming getting off that bitch. Scrappy tried to act like he was bad and all this. Oh, turn off the camera, this, that, and that. Scrappy, don't nobody see you, Scrappy. Don't nobody see you, Scrappy. Ain't nobody scared of you, honey. Definitely ain't Mama D. Child, and that was that. Child, you knew nothing was gonna come out of that. I never bought CC Bambi's um. Mama, but it makes sense because Bambi looked like she was a fucking crack baby anyway. You know, Cece was on crack, so I assume she was probably on crack when she was pregnant with Bambi. Bambi looked like a fucking crack baby anyway. Fucking crack baby ass Bambi. That's what we gonna call Bambi, the crack baby. At least for this last review. Anyway, Devil Dick is at his restaurant. Now, Devil Dick is doing something good. He's giving out free food to the community at his little seafood spot. While I'm here in Atlanta, I'm going to have to go by and check out his little spot. And see if I can catch Devil Dick down there. Y'all know I see it for Devil Dick. Hopefully I catch him down there. 
Anyway, um, KK swing by. KK stops to talk to Cheyenne. She tells Cheyenne, hey, boo, I saw you in um, Shooter. And y'all was all hugged up. What's going on? So Cheyenne tells her about her and Shooter. She said, well, do um, Devil Dick know? Nah, he don't know. Or well, are you being a hoe? Like, what is you doing? Like, y'all been together two years. Like, what the fuck? Are you whoring? You know? Hoeing, sowing, new things growing. You know what I'm saying? Hoeing, sowing, new things growing. <laughs> anyway. Come on now. Okay, you know KK don't pull no punches. She like, do I look like a hoe? Yes, bitch, you look like a whore. You look like a whore and a hoe. But that's not... You know, because Love & Hip Hop is here for the proliferation of... Of hoes and skanks across the fruited plains. We already know that. Anyway. She said. Cheyenne said. Well I'll tell Scrappy when I'm ready. KK looking at her like. Girl you better tell him before I tell him. Because. Sham. You know how KK is. Lastly we end with colorism. Keisha at the radio station. At Jock's radio station. For an interview. Colorism Keisha came to. To do an interview. Next thing you know, Jock and the chick that's on the radio with him ambush her talk about, oh, we know you came here for this, but we got um Akbar the gutter snipe right up out the hood. She wants to talk to you. Color and they got her on some little screen or whatever. Colorism Keisha did exactly what I would do. Y'all got who to do what? No bitch. I didn't come here for that. I came here to interview by myself. That whore is not a part of my interview. She ain't make this record with me. She ain't making no money with me. She ain't on no interview with me. Fuck you. And fuck that bitch. I would have did just like um, Keisha. Because colorism Keisha was right. That shit was disrespectful. Jock them wouldn't have pulled that shit with any other artist. And that shit was messy as fuck. And I would have did just like her. That bitch got up, got her shit, and walked out and said, nope, this is over. I don't give a fuck if y'all in the middle of this. This is over. And I don't blame her. She left and kept it moving. I was like, nah, you ain't going to disrespect me like that. And I was with her. That shit was unprofessional. It was messy as fuck. And colorism Keisha was right. I was with her 1,000% on it. She... Had it why I would have did the exact same thing. I ain't gonna let y'all sit here and disrespect me out this whole on my interview. You told me you were interviewing me, not me and her. If no, we're not doing that. I ain't scared of her, but I ain't giving her no shine, not with me anyway. I'm gone. That's it. I'm out. And just like that, I'm out as well. That was Love Hip Hop. Season 9, episode 4, which will probably be my last episode of a love and hip hop that I would do it's been real it's been fun I had fun doing it and like I said some of my best comedy has come out during my love and hip hop reviews but I'll keep them to myself if you all think I should continue I really have to have a, a good amount of feedback in the comment section or some numbers or something but the numbers just don't support me continuing to do love hip hop Atlanta so I think I'm going to be done after this with that being said I'm out y'all it's been real thank y'all for coming until my next review of something other than love and hip hop y'all drive safely I'm good I'm out <laughs>